I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. All right, before I get to the fishing, um, I just want to cover a couple of gear things. One is the waders. I just want to point out the difference uh, between the cleated sold boot foot waders and the felt sold. I really prefer felt. Um, it's it's best for the environment I'm in, which is typically uh, you've got some weeds over rocks, it's slippery, and so forth. Um, and I'll, I'll say more about that. But the ones on the right, those are the felt sold. The ones on the left are the cleated, and I'll say more about that as we go on. And I just want to point out a couple of relatively new things on my surf belt. Um, at the top is a plier holder, below that a boga grip holder. These are both from Turtle Cove Tackles, this is relatively new stuff. Uh, and below are the two plugs I'm using. Actually, I guess I'm just using that one bunker colored plug um, on this trip. They're both Ron Arrow plugs. Uh, I'm going to talk about the gear um, while the fishing's going on. And I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description. All right, some Dawn pencil popping. Um, yeah, an interesting thing about this trip is uh, this fish is going to be an okay size. And it's just smalls after that, but the one at the end is really nice. So uh, it's interesting to pull a, a really big one from amongst uh, the smaller fish. Um, all right, so back to those waders. Um, so I'm wearing these breathable boot foot um, Hellbender waders by Frog Talks, and they're very comfortable. I'm really liking them. Boy, I hope they hold up because I really like them a lot. And um, I like that they're 180 bucks. Which, if you've looked for breathable boot foot waders, the prices can be just incredible. Um, so these are reasonably priced. They seem like they're well made. What I really like, and this is a personal thing, but I like the felt sole. Um, at times, we're going to be able to get to see the the bottom here a little bit. It's it's weed covered rocks, and just you know, even just walking on that stuff, it's slippery, and um, so that is really helpful. Even they're also really good. The felt sole in general, um, when you're like on top of a rock, um, it's not as good as having like spiked felt. That's my favorite. All right, hey, the handling of this fish, so you can't tell here, but there's a really steep incline where these stones are. If I take the tension off the line, the fish just slides right back in the water. This is all wet, very smooth stones. I'm not hurting the fish by dragging the two feet to get it to a flat place. Um, these hooks have their barbs crushed a little bit, so um, it, you know, typically they're easy to get. Yeah, it came right out, and I'm not kicking this guy back in. I'm just going to nudge him to where that little slope is and then he'll just shoot right into the water off he goes nice shape and I'm happy I never had to touch him it's good for him it's good for me I mentioned uh, spike felt for being on top of rocks that's typically for wading shoes I've never seen uh, boot foot waders that had spike felt but certainly you can get those kinds of soles for like uh, corkers and things for wading shoes Now another reason I like felt sold waders, and th this goes for any brand, not just the frog togs that I happen to be wearing, I'm just talking about uh, felt sold boots um, in general, is that I find them a little bit easier walking on, you, you saw the stones when I pulled that bass up on the beach, um, you know, those little stones it's, it could be just really tiring to walk on, and I find that the cleated sole boots tend to like sink in more so like every step you take you sink in a little bit and you know, if you're walking any kind of a distance it gets pretty tiring uh, I'm not saying it's not tiring with the felt sold ones but the, f the bottom tends to be flatter so it's almost like a little bit of a snowshoe effect going on so you're not sinking in so much and um, yeah it, it makes it quite a bit easier walking on the surface so it's not just the non-slip um, yeah, so you know, look at those stones. You know, every step when you take that, uh, take a step onto that stuff. Yeah, you're sinking in. You sink in a little, <clears throat> a little bit less with those felt sold waders. Now you're gonna see me go for my plier several times in this video, and uh, you know, it's nice to be able to just pull them out, put them back in easily, and not have to worry about losing them. Not have to worry about the plier sheath coming apart as they often end up doing. Um, 
So I've got a new plier carrier. Uh, it comes from Turtle Cove Tackle. It's just a small operation. These things are in a couple of shops. I'll have a link to them um, in the video description. Uh, I'm liking it. It just works. I can tell it's well made. I can't imagine that it's going to come apart or anything. So, um, you know, it's a simple thing, but it, it's nice and convenient. By the way, my um, surf belt is actually like a a weight belt that divers use, just a plain belt, and these things go on um, really easily. Now, what you won't see me use in this video, but uh, I had the picture at the beginning, uh, is that boga carrier. Uh, I've never had a halfway decent boga carrier that, that's going to handle a 60-pound boga grip. Um, this one is very well thought out. It's The, the boga is not going to fall out of the air. It's not swinging around. It's comfortable. Um, it When you're pulling it out of the holder, you have to give it a, like a little bit of a twist and then it will come out. If you try to pull straight up with no twist, it's just not coming out. Um, but, you know, there's a fine line there between having it come out easy and having it come out too easy. I can tell you it's in there. It's not going any place. You give it a little twist. Um, it's going to come out of there and it's very comfortable. So that's also the same guy, Turtle Cove Tackle. Um, so those are two things that I've uh, put on my belt this year that I really like, and I've had that the Boga Carrier on. I've had both items on most of the summer, um, and they're nice. Yeah, and while I'm looking down, I see the um, uh, Tsunami Salt X reel. Yeah, uh, I've had it now for a couple of months. I'm using it a lot. I really like it. Um, you know, time will tell. I, I expect it, it will hold up just fine, but right now... Uh, it's awesome. All right, so I'm working on the, um, this will be the last of the smaller fish here, and then we're going to move on to a nice one. And then I'm not catching them every cast here. I'm editing out a couple of fishless casts in between, but you can tell by the amount of daylight, uh, you know, these are all caught pretty close together. And something I need to add about those felt uh, sold waders is that they are banned in some states in mostly I think this is all fresh water they're worried about like in streams that the felt picks up organisms and transfers them from like one stream to another so uh, that's just something to look out for um, I don't know of any regulations against them in salt water and I prefer felt but you know what most people would probably be better off with the lug foot like on the sand beaches in mud that kind of environment and uh, these waders are sold both ways so this plug is that Ron Arra Strike Pro, uh, two and three quarter ounce. It's the flat bottomed one. Um, yeah, they're hard to find. Uh, if you go online, you can see them on eBay and stuff. My plan is to lose these and then uh, use something else. I've only got three of them. All right, so I want to focus in on how much time this fish spends on the surface. This thing is thrashing all over, tail flipping over, and it's just I'm putting keeping a lot of pressure on them. I always pressure these fish really hard in the beginning, especially since there's a lot of rocks around. But look, it's still up there. It's flopping all over the place. You know what? That thing is burning energy right now. That's exactly what I want it to do. Um, it, it won't start running until about now. All right, this is a quality fish, and you know what? That is pretty much the only run it took was just that little short bit there, and that's because it burned up a lot of energy earlier when it was on the surface thrashing around. Um, you know what? If, if I had a uh, different angle where you could see what I was doing, that rod is up behind me. It is arched all the way over like a U. I mean, there's, there's a lot of load on the rod, and it, um, you know, these uh, moderate action rods, um, more of a parabolic bend, boy, it's like a big shock absorber while that fish is thrashing back and forth. And um, yeah, it keeps the hooks in most of the time. Sometimes they do shake them, but uh, not this one. And the line is a 30 pound test braid. All right, there's a nice still picture, and you know what? That battle was just slightly over two minutes, so that fish is in beautiful condition, and off it's going to go. Oh, nice. Huh. Oh, look at that. He... Good shape. Okay, if you like these videos, please subscribe.